and CLG40 project. So yes, uh, I'm I'm now working in the virtual part of our, uh, the the part of our group was part of a Gravita project, and uh, last year I was working in Davis uh, for uh, CLG40. Our CI was uh, David Sand from Arizona, and uh, I work with uh, Stefano Valenti from UC Davis. And uh, since uh, uh, Lino and uh, Kaplan has already given a very good uh, detailed talk yesterday about the Gravita, so uh, this talk I will mainly talk about the CLG40. So this plot is showing the, the lucky and la unlucky. The lucky is uh, the CLG40 was one of the six groups independently detected the kilonova. Unlucky is the, the second one. So we are 20 minutes later uh, than the swarm test. <laughs> Uh, I will go uh, use some slides to show why we will do the search and what we are expected from the, the search. So uh, I will go to fast because it was talked uh, several times in some presentation. So uh, uh, w w we know that from the gravitational wave, the, the strain of the waveform, we can know much uh, information. We know the mass, we know the strain, we can estimate the distance. But once you have very early uh, gravitational wave values, you can get very uh, early uh, flash spectrum. You can know uh, lots of uh, physics of the source of the progenitors or environments. And you can use them to do uh, like cosmology, like uh, fund uh, fundamental uh, physics and can train the models uh, of the source. Okay. So uh, this is the, the main uh, astrophysics sources emitting uh, uh, gravitational wave uh, for the, the ground-based uh, interferometers. So there are two main uh, classes. One is for the binary system and the core flap system. And for the binary system, uh, since it emits uh, uh, lots of mass, so for the LIGO, it can uh, go very deep and uh, can uh, have a very good rate. And for the uh, core flaps, one, uh, uh, some models uh, are, test are testing for uh, this, and uh, they say, uh, it can, uh, for the LIGO, it can, could uh, be detectable from the Milky Way to the, the most optics so model is a uh, few mark per, mark per second. So for this range, the, the rate is, uh, is lower. So hope uh, the future LIGO world could go deeper or under Kagura LIGO India. And then the rate, uh, so we are very uh, uh, expecting this kind of source in the future. So uh, this is why we expect it. So from the electromagnetic emission, uh, for if there is one neutron star involved in the binary system, we are expected to have uh, two uh, uh, parts of emission. One is, uh, sorry, one is an isotropic uh, short GRB and the afterglow emission. One is the isotropic uh, afterglow in radio and the isotropic kilonova, which is the most interesting part uh, now. And uh, for the core class, we can see that uh, it have a, a very uh, very uh, full multi wavelength uh, detectable emission. But so the only issue is uh, it's the, the rate and the range. For the, it's the, uh, for the uh, neutron star stabilities, since it doesn't have the optical and the, the emit mass is very low, so I think it's very hard, even for uh, like one, even for optical. <laughs> so if there's uh, one uh, binary, binary uh, black hole uh, emission uh, source, so some models say it ha could be. Uh, have some emissions for the electromagnet, but uh, it's still a question. So th this plot shows some expected uh, light curves from the binary neutron star system. So there are some uh, kilonova and uh, uh, afterglow models. So if you, um, you can combine these, these models with the standard uh, uh, supernova model. This is the uh, supernova uh, 1998. BW is the first uh, uh, core collapse supernova created with the, the short GRB. So you can see that uh, all the, this kind of light curve is very fast. The standard time scale is uh, 10 days. So it's very challenging for the follow up and identification. So that's the need of the, the so called time domain astronomy. So this is the, the situation for the multi messenger. So once you want to combine the the two informations, you can search the electromagnet from the gravitational wave, which is the most popular way. Because you can also do the reverse search, but uh, since we have only one uh, or two, uh, LIGO and Virgo, so if you have very high candidates, uh, optical tension, you can do that. But uh, the most common way is to search the electromagnet from the gravitational wave. 
And uh, the difficulty is the gravitational wave uncertainty is uh, large. So you can see that from, uh, with the two LIGO interferometers, it goes from 100 to 1,000 square degrees, even with the Virgo. Uh, so for this uh, binary neutron star event, with the Virgo arc limit, it is 33 square degrees, but still large. Okay? So for this large uncertainty, so uh, there are two schedules was, uh, was supposed to do the search. One is the One is the, the blind search, so means uh, you use the you tiling the uncertainty uh, with a very large field view box and uh, uh, move the box one by one. Why is to search the, the galaxies inside the uncertainty, so which is used by the other body? So I will use one slide to show the example of gravita response, so you can see that. Uh, once we have the gravita, uh, uh, gravitational wave uncertainty, uh, we will use one uh, tool to tile in the, the uncertainty region. And then uh, Lino will lead the, the Naples group to uh, make the imaging and the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the calibration. Okay, then the data will be archived to the machine in Rome and uh, then two groups will have the access to the data. So. Uh, so our part of our group was majorly using the image difference approach to do the uh, transient classification. So for this method, it's very uh, useful for the faint and for the, the transient, which is very close to the nucleus of the, the galaxy. But the issue is very slow. But, uh, and also, another issue is uh, it will bring lots of focus uh, things because the, the convolution of the kernels sometimes is not very perfect. So, and uh, then, uh, so for the standard the one square degree image, we could be uh, create 10,000 uh, uh, of uh, candidates. So the most important thing is how to rank these candidates and uh, see, to see if there are some uh, treasures inside these 10,000 candidates. So till now we're using the ranking algorithms based on the parameters from the track and hot pants, which is used for, to do the image difference. But in the future, I think uh, we will use, uh, because now the artificial intelligence is very important. So uh, we, uh, what I am now working and uh, I want to do is to use the machine learning to, the, to do the image or to the light curve uh, classification. So I can I will talk a little bit about this later. So once we have very good uh, uh, candidates, we will to do the, the, the follow-up to, to make the classification. Okay. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about, about the DRD40. So uh, what is DRD40? It's uh, first designed as a supernova search. So, uh, so we, we, everybody knows that there is a very famous search in, uh, called Leak by uh, Berkeley. They have, uh, but they, they are only uh, looking the north sky. So uh, our idea is to have uh, the similar one for the south. So we have one uh, telescope. It's more is 40 centimeter telescope in Chile, and uh, with uh, 10 acronym is uh, square degrees field of view. And uh, it, was, uh, have, it was equivalent with a very uh, automatic pipeline. So it uh, can uh, decrease the time between the exposure and the data is collected. And it's very fast. So it's very suitable for the, the follow-up. And now, uh, three months ago, we have another telescope in Austria. And then, uh, what is the galaxy sample? So, uh, till now we use uh, uh, the, 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 the galaxy catalogs for, uh, from the GWGC, which is public, uh, which is a public catalog. We uh, select uh, 40 megaparsecond, and we select the most luminous galaxies, and we ask the Milky Way extinction is low, uh, slow, and uh, uh, is uh, lower, and then uh, this plot shows the, the galaxy map. And we can see the distance is district uniform within the 40 megaparsecond, but we ask the, the, the most luminous galaxies and the, the most biggest uh, ones. Okay, and uh, we also use uh, artificial star experiments to test, to, uh, test uh, how much deeper we can go uh, for in the difference image, and uh, it's more or less 19 uh, magnitude on average. And uh, yeah, we have already uh, performed uh, for more or less two years. And uh, within these two years, we have already discovered uh, 30 uh, nearby supernova. So it's like the rate is one per month, so which is okay. 
And uh, within these 30 uh, nearby uh, supernova, there are more or less eight within very high candidates. Okay, uh, it means uh, with 48 hours uh, after the exposure. So one cell, so uh, since it's very good to do the follow-up, so we join the LIGO O2 period. And one cell is, uh, so this is uh, the LIGO map from, uh, for the, the for 15 uh, December 28, uh, 26, uh, 26. So once there is a LIGO trigger, and uh, well, we have one uh, algorithm, so we will uh, uh, combine the, the probability and combine the, the, the luminous uh, inside the region to see, to rank the galaxy, and uh, to see how many, uh, so the number of the galaxies, and uh, decide uh, which galaxy should uh, offer the high priorities. And uh, before that night, we will send this query with different uh, priorities. And if uh, it's, uh, the number is, is more, we can uh, trace all of them. But if uh, the antiquity might be large, we will uh, do the special card and the luminosity card. So uh, yeah, this is the, the amazing uh, binary neutron star system, uh, binary neutron star uh, source. So it's, uh, first, uh, there's a gravitational wave detect with the very low uh, force atom rate, which, which means it's very real. Uh, gravitational wave to start the noise. And then two seconds later, the VRV uh, signal is also uh, detected. And uh, with uh, 11 hours later, uh, there is uh, one optical kilonova was detected in NG3-4993, and uh, six groups independently detected, uh, including, kilo, uh, in, including uh, Kiyaki-40. Uh, so this plot shows uh, uh, the strategy. So this, uh, so uh, this green uh, banana is the, the LIGO Virgo region. So the LIGO with the, the Virgo limit. And uh, inside of this 33 square degrees box, we have only uh, 20 uh, galaxies. So we decided to trace all of them. And then, uh, because the Fermi also uh, uh, published their uh, map, so we decided to trace the 40 galaxies from the Fermi. So from that, for that night, we have 60 galaxies to trace. And uh, after 11 hours, more or less, uh, we got uh, the find this kilonova. And this is this probably shows that the Martin master astronomy has truly begun. So then, uh, uh, weeks later, uh, we got the X-ray ultraviolet uh, near infrared radio. And uh, this is the six group. Uh, so here the photo is this one. And this is the <coughs> light curve of crt 76 k If you it's based is that uh, we are the supernova study, so we uh, monitor these uh, galaxies uh, from uh, one or, or more two years before, so we have uh, the upper limits. And we combine this uh, light curve with some uh, kilonova models, and uh, this is the standard, uh, so some supernova models. So we can see that th this light curve is very comparable to one uh, faster kilonova model. So it's cooling, very, cooling down very fast. And uh, this is the, the kilonova identification from the Gravita uh, VLT extruder spectrum, so which is talked detailed by Kablava yesterday. So I will just show this plot. And I will show this, the parameter space. So we can see that uh, this, is, this one is the, this kilonova. So it's more or less empty around. So, uh, so more like the, it's the first kilonova. So I know there are four uh, kilonova candidates, but this is the first uh, uh, sure kilonova because it has a very early uh, spectrum. And uh, why it's empty here, I, I can guess two reasons. One is the identification, so it's uh, the candidates. So that's, that's why we need a uh, QRT-40 like uh, daily candidates search. And this, that's why uh, we need a multi mass in this search. So if you have a gamma ray or you have a, uh, the other uh, alerts, it should be uh, create the, the, the alerts. And then I think it's the rate. So we have another uh, calculation for the rate. So this, you can see, uh, this one is uh, our uh, rate because we are not independently detected. We are detected just because of the LIGO information. So it's just a limit. So we have a simple calculation that if there's no LIGO, how much years will be cost by us to independently detect it. So the result is 18.4 years. So more or less 20 years we can uh, to detect this kilonova. So yeah, it's very long. So 
that, that explains why the, the, the gravitational wave uh, alert is very important for us. And, uh, yeah, and then it's for the future. So uh, this uh, event, there's no doubt that the success of uh, the point search and the small size rule. But how about the future? Okay, so first I have to say that the, if there is one trigger very distance, uh, it will be very challenging for the pointed search because the gas catalog is, uh, is incomplete, incompletely. So this product shows the Glade, which is the best uh, public galaxy catalog. I know there are some groups have their own private galaxy catalog, but this one is public. For this public catalog, it's only uh, complete up to 73 microseconds. So if you go out, uh, uh, go even further, then you will lose lots of uh, faint galaxies. Means uh, lots of uh, lots of years. And uh, also, what about the future in uh, LIGO 3? Um, what, so nobody knows what will happen uh, in LIGO 3. Maybe there are one binary neutron star system or galaxy to supernova or if somebody even found some uh, emission from the bi binary black hole. So, but, uh, uh, so if there is uh, one uh, uh, trigger that's very close, I think that's the, what we can use the pointed search. Because the per pointed search is very uh, well designed for the nearby uh, bright transients. So it can have very high tendency, but the, the shortage, the shortage is the, the, the galaxy completely, for example, and then it's the distance is very is limited. If you want to go uh, even further for the small telescope, is you will uh, increase lots of the exposure time. Uh, so this product shows that how much deeper that the DR40 can reach for that kilonova. So it shows that for kilonova we can go to even if it's 80 meg per second we can get the detections. But if it's even further, we cannot uh, get the detection. We need to add the exposure. And uh, for the tiling, uh, for the tiling strategies, you can go better further. But it's very the, the, the shortage is, is very time consuming for the image processing and the real book uh, classification. So you need a, a candidate's uh, ranking algorithm. So that, that's what I suppose I should do before the O3. So now I'm making I'm making the uh, trying to play with the, the, the machine learning thing uh, and uh, to test with uh, uh, some telescope, uh, I say, for example, I said Schmidt telescope, which is uh, raised uh, uh, days ago, uh, it's equivalent with the uh, automatic pipeline. And we can also trace not only G, uh, GW, maybe GRB, FRB, or neutrino. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sheng. Any question for Sheng? Well, I have a curiosity. Uh, you mentioned several times that machine learning can be very useful for fast identification. Yeah. Um, which kind of uh, algorithms are you considering in particular? Is there any? Considering from the machine learning? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you mean the, how to judge if it's uh, yeah. good or not? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm trying to play with the machine learning recently. I see uh, go from uh, some papers from maybe RSC. And uh, they will, so for the uh, supervised machine learning, they can uh, have, uh, so, so they, they will depend, so they will, it will depend on the features you give. They will give a probability to every candidate. And then you can plot uh, inside the, the plots. Then it will be classified as true uh, cluster. And then uh, you will have that uh, a plot shows that the x-axis is missed, uh, the source is good, but it's missed. And the y-axis is uh, it, it's not uh, good, but it's, uh, uh, it's, it's considered as good. So that curve should be like this. And if it's very uh, lower, then it could be better. That's one uh, method for the to, to, uh, to classify. Thank you. Other questions? If there are no other questions, let's thank Shengyan again. <laughs>